So whether he kills five or whether he kills one, unfortunately, this person, he only has one life and there's only one penalty that can be applied. And the reason for this, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showing us in this lesson, in, this is within an Islamic paradigm, that in this, even in this situation, that we always have to remember that true and complete justice is going to be when? On Yom al -Qiyam. It's not going to be in this one. Should we strive for justice? Should we strive to fight oppression? Yes, absolutely. There's, there's no doubt about that. We continue doing that. But we have to remember, you know, sometimes we think, man, this guy, he got away, this person he's oppressing, this person he's been doing these things for so long, you know, how, why isn't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, why isn't he grabbing him, why isn't he doing something about him? Well, and remember this ayah. Remember this ayah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he very specifically talks about the walimun. He talks about the people who are oppressive. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from dhulm, and to protect us from being lawyer. I mean. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he also says, And and this ayah is one that really should give us hope. Where he says, We shall certainly test you with fear, hunger, loss, property, love, lives, and crops, but give good news to those who are steadfast. And who are these individuals? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he completes it in the rest of the verse saying, الَّذِينَ إِذَا صَابَتُ مُصِيبَةٍ قَالُوا إِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ Those who say, when afflicted with calamity, we belong to Allah, and to Him we shall return. أُولَٰئِكَ عَلَيْهِمْ صَلَوَاتٌ مِنْ رَبِّهِمْ وَرَحْمًا وَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمْ مُحْتَدُونَ That these will be given blessings and mercy from their Lord, and it is they who are rightly guided. And this isn't meant to be a lip service. That's, that's not what Allah is intending here. He's not saying that every time a, a difficulty fit comes to you or every time a trial comes to you, that you just provide this lip service, that you just say this, and this is going to cure all of your problems. The, the purpose behind this verse and the reason that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us and told us this verse is so that we, we take a reflective and introspectual perspective behind it. Meaning that if we look at these different situations and we look at the life of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we look at the life of the companions and other prophets who faced all of these difficulties, nobody denied them this ability to feel that the way that they did. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't prevent them, didn't tell them, you know, don't feel distraught, don't feel upset, don't feel, he didn't say don't feel these things. You are more than welcome to always deal with and handle these emotions and take them in. Be upset, that's fine. You know, and, and, and sometimes even in negative situations, we have to realize that there are some things that we don't have control over. There's a young sister, and she had come, she had come to see me and she was like, you know, there's, there's this, there's this non-Muslim boy who I really love. I really love him. I couldn't tell her like, you know, well it's haram for you to love him. She would just tell me, well, these are my feelings. This is what I'm feeling. And I told her, I was like, I understand. You know, I, I'm, I'm sure these feelings are very strong. And it's not something that's maybe even in your control. But you are accountable for your actions. It's acting on those feelings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will hold you accountable for. I'm not saying don't have feelings. It's, it's like telling someone don't love their mother. Or telling someone don't hate this person. Well, these, are, these are feelings. I don't, I don't have control over my feelings. But I do have control over what I do with those feelings and how I act on them. And sometimes it's difficult, you know, sometimes it's difficult to, to make that distinction. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He will always hold us accountable for what? Actions. Our actions. He doesn't hold us accountable for our thoughts. And subhanAllah, the, the amazing situation here, or the amazing paradigm here, is that if I love something that is evil, if I'm inclined or attracted to drinking alcohol or drugs or zina or whatever evil it is, and I stop myself from doing that, what is my situation in front of Allah? Huh? Good. How is it good? Now think about the hadith. 
There's a hadith very specific about this situation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will record a good deed. An individual who does not act on these evil desires is recorded a good deed. So we have to remember these things and again, you know, keep, keep them in perspective. So saying that, it's very important for all of us to understand and acknowledge the, these feelings that we have. Because we, we do, we're, hum, we're human beings. We will always feel different things. Even he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, there are situations where he used to cry, there are situations where he used to laugh, there are situations where he used to get angry. And he never said, you know, don't do this or don't do that, or don't be, you know, don't be happy, don't be sad. He didn't say these things. He himself, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he expressed these things. And even when he said, la taghdab, he said, when he said, don't be angry, he himself, used to, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, used to get angry. And the meaning behind it was like, don't act on that anger. Don't, don't be excessively upset. Don't get excessively angry and act on it and say things you don't mean. And, and a, a clear example of this, this happens all the time, and this is something, you know, I, I, I want to make sure that we all understand. I've had multiple people come up to me and say, I divorced my wife three times, what is the hukum? In one sitting. My answer is usually, you're an idiot. You know, why, why would you say that? Why? Like, you, you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you control over your tongue. Yeah. Just divorce her one time. I'm, I'm, I didn't say don't be angry at her. You know, one brother was like, hey, you know, does the divorce count if I'm angry with her? I was like, who, who divorces their wife when they're happy with her? I mean, doesn't, they're, they're, <laughs> you're, you're, going, you're going to be angry, obviously. But subhanAllah, it's, it's so sad, and I don't mean to go on too much of a tangent. We're, in a, we're at a time where as Muslims, we don't know how to marry and we don't know how to divorce. It's, it's crazy, you know, and it's, it's really upsetting. Well, like, just divorce your wife one time. And you don't have to go back with her. It's, it's not a condition. And even this is something the Prophet said, there are two types of talaq. Where he said, these are talaq and bid'i. That this type of, to do talaq in this way is a bid'ah. Meaning, that if an individual does talaq in this way, and unfortunately it's become very common in the Muslim world, and I, I can see now why Umar and he wanted it to, to stick. And why the four, four I'm, uh, they wanted to stick. It's not a game. What we say, we're accountable for. And there have to be repercussions behind. And this is part of controlling our anger. This is part of controlling what we say, and what we do, and how we act. And the other thing is grieving. Gr grieving takes time. It, it, it does. When the Prophet ﷺ set a stipulation of three days for grieving, what, what does that mean to you? That means that on day four I need to be happy now? Is that, is that what it means? What does it mean to grieve for three days? Hmm. For a woman whose husband's died on her, she gets how, how, how long does she get? Four days. Four months and ten days. In four months and the eleventh day, she's good? Is that how it works? No. <laughs> it's what a time to collect your thoughts. That's, that's definitely part of it, but I'm saying, and let, let me give you a practical example. Like I said, my, my, my grandmother died probably two decades ago. I still, I still grieve sometimes. I'm still upset about it. Is that wrong? No. No. I mean, this means something. When the Prophet ﷺ gave us three days for, for all of us, and he gave a wife four months and ten days. <coughs> to do what? Like, what is the purpose of that time frame? Like, try to get back to your life? Huh? You're, you're, this, is, this is very close to the answer. Meaning, you're allowed personal leave. You, are, you have, in Islam, you have this opportunity to take personal leave for those three days. Meaning, and even, even in American society, when there's a death in the family, I'm allowed to go to work and tell them what? Right, listen, I have a death in my family, I won't be coming into, I won't be coming into work. The difference in Islam is that Islam has prescribed three days. That you, you want to stay away from work, you don't want to get involved, you don't want to get back in society, no problem. But you only have, what? You only have three days. You can continue to grieve 
four, five, six, a year, two years, ten years, twenty years. You can grieve out however long you want, but you are not allowed to what? Continue this personal leave. Personal leave stops at three days. You want to continue <coughs> grieving after that? That's fine, but you can't do it by removing and secluding yourself from society. That is the purpose behind. And when a woman dies, obviously there, there are a few more complications, there are a few more issues in that. But again, in, in general, in general this is the purpose behind that. But it doesn't mean don't grieve. It doesn't mean don't be upset. It doesn't mean that we're not allowed to process these things. But even with this grief, even with these feelings, even with all of these things, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just says, listen, you, yes, have all of these feelings and, and, and understand what it is that we're feeling because unfortunately we live in an era where we're very disconnected from our feelings very disconnected from our feelings and I remember uh, Muhammad Shanawi he, and he gave a really good example of this he was like he, he was giving a khutbah on this and he was saying that you know we live in an era where I'm looking on my Facebook and I'll have a thread where it's talking about a recipe I'll scroll up and it's talking about a mass shooting I'll scroll up and talking about like somebody killing their pet. I'll scroll up. There'll be a meme that's making fun of someone. I'll scroll up. You know, and I'll, I just, I as an individual, I just haven't, I don't have the opportunity to acknowledge and say, okay, react, how, how am I feeling to these things? We've just become so numb and so out of touch with, with our feelings that this has an effect on our personal relationships. This has an effect on our, our marital relationships. This has an effect on our relationship with our children. And our children, in turn, ha have become like that because we've, we don't even interact with each other anymore. But inshallah, you know, how to get in touch with our feelings and how to, you know, talking about how, how to deal with those things, I think that's going to, that's a talk for another time. Uh, I, I don't want to uh, stray too much. But... I do want to close with one thing that you know sometimes there are people who might have suicidal thoughts sometimes there are people who might have thoughts of despair but this doesn't mean that that person necessarily has a weakness in, in their iman it just, it's just a lapse it's just a lapse but if those lapses become longer and more frequently then, then, then that person needs help Because sometimes we look at depression or we look at other things, we'll say, oh, you know, well, that, this is just a sign of weakness in your iman, akhi. Well, I mean, I had the flu last week, is that a sign of weakness in my iman? <laughs> Sickness is real, whether it be mental or whether it be physical. And we, we, we as a community, we really need to learn to acknowledge that. Uh, sometimes, do, do these things have an effect on each other? Meaning, if I'm spiritually well, can this help my physical sickness? Yes, I, I do believe that. And if I'm spiritually well, can it help my mental sickness? Yeah, I do. But will it cure it? Not necessarily. Not necessarily. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests us all in different ways. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us tawfiq, to protect us from these illnesses, to protect our families from these illnesses, and, and to bless this jama'ah, and to bless the Muslim uh, woman, and to protect us. From all hill, ills and all harms, wa qulu qawliyada, wa astaghfirullahi wa kum misal muslim, wa qulu qawliyada, inna hu wa qulu qawliyada. So I, I was going to say that, uh, and I, I'm sure, you know, Imam Rauf offers it also, but we, I do provide uh, counseling services. I'm not a counselor, but uh, I do provide counseling services, meaning that uh, there are people who do come in to me and who do have different mental issues, I will redirect them. I, do, I don't do therapies and counseling myself because I'm not certified. But there, there are people who do faith-based counseling who I will redirect them to. So if you do know somebody who is suffering from these things, I mean, I, I have had suicide cases. I have had cases with, like, drug abuse. Um, you know, these people do come to me. Um, and it's just important that, to understand that as an imam, I'm a gateway to help them to these things. The only thing I, I can help people with is you know marriage counseling uh, we we do, but also you know if if there's any type of uh, how do I make my relationship better with Allah, this is something I can definitely you know help with. So I ask Allah Subhanahu wa Taala for tawfiq and to bless all of you. Jazakallah. Jazakallah khair, my friend. If an imam is parked around the building, I'm gonna request you all to please move the parkour different spot because the people who are doing the solar work.
they're already here. So if your car is parked 